Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Many viewers have been asking for a garden update, and here it is. Presenting Hot Pepper Garden 2023. 41 in-ground plants, 166 in pots, plus maybe a dozen more pots with herbs and flowers. It's a lot of work to make this happen, and I'm glad to be done with the heavy lifting. So let me back up a little bit and show you how I got here. Back in April, seedlings were growing indoors, up in the attic, and down in the basement. Returning waterfowl were spotted in our neighborhood. I planted some Ladino clover in the garden beds, and work was just beginning on a big project to completely reconstruct our street for the first time in 60 years, with all the accompanying noise, dust, and driving issues. In May, the first round of plants were moved outside to harden off in advance of our annual neighborhood plant sale. This year, I finally bought a shade cloth to control the amount of sun they receive. These come in many sizes and shade percentages, much easier than constantly moving the plants around to keep them in the shade. And while it's nice to have a ring camera for security purposes, it can also show you things I forgot to film. Here I am, way in the background, pulling back the cloth to show the plants to a neighbor. The plant sale took place on May the 20th. As always, it was a lot of fun. We sold many plants and connected with lots of nice folks. I love that Stefan wore his Harvest of Hot Pepper shirt in blue. You can buy that shirt and other cool merch right on the YouTube page where you're watching this video. The day after the sale, I brought out the rest of the plants to harden off. After a few more days, it was time to pull the tarp off the dirt pile and start potting up some plants. Because I reuse the soil each year, I add various amendments. Let's go over them one by one. Fishner Fish Manure Humus Compost Fertilizer is something I've used for several years with very good results. It's sustainably sourced and full of good living stuff to feed your soil. I added one to two cups per pot, depending on the size of the pot. Here's organic compost plus manure. I added three to five cups of this per container based on its size. After adding more compost, I also added a handful of perlite and mixed it in to ensure good drainage. Then a tablespoon each of Epsom salt and blood meal. Epsom salt is a good source of magnesium. Blood meal is a good source of nitrogen, but I use it to repel rabbits and it works well for me. It can also repel squirrels, but you may need to use a little more. I'll come back to this later in the episode. Last, but definitely not least, are Organic Rev Growth Stimulant and Fox Farm Big Bloom Organic Liquid Plant Food. I mixed two tablespoons of each with water in a one and a half gallon watering can and poured it over the leaves and into the soil of each plant just after potting. Reduces transplant shock and gives the plants a gentle head start. These ceramic pots were the first to be planted. For several years now, I've always arranged the same seven pots here on this shelf. You can hear the street crew in the background. Safety first, but oy, so much beeping. Then I kept on potting. When I felt the plants were sufficiently hardened off, I prepared to plant the front beds. You're probably wondering about that clover. It's Ladino clover, which helps fix nitrogen in the soil after it dies and the roots decay. I planted it back in April, and originally I planned to turn it over into the soil before I planted the peppers. But because of its pleasing appearance in our front yard, I had the wild idea of growing clover as a companion crop to the pepper plants. I figured it would look nice, plus reduce weeds without the need for mulch. So that's what I did. I marked off the area with chalk to locate the holes. I dug oversized holes and added the same amendments I used for the pots. Then in went the plants. A couple of days later, the street crew laid down the first two layers of asphalt on our new street. Fascinating to watch. Plus, no more clouds of dust every time a vehicle drove down the street. This was the day I started to realize the clover was growing to grow just a little taller than I'd expected. Potting continued, and by June the 6th, it was completed. Now the front yard is covered with pots, and the dirt pile on the driveway is gone. Time to relax and watch them grow. But on the morning of June the 8th, I awakened to something unexpected. An animal had been rummaging around in the clover. It destroyed one plant and gave a serious topping to another. Originally, 
I suspected bunnies. Now, our ring doorbell captures occasional images through the night, even when the motion isn't activated. The level of detail is very poor, but it did provide my answer. In the first capture, I saw what I was pretty sure was a squirrel. In the second, I saw its fluffy tail as it bounded out of the garden. So I replaced the two damaged plants, then spread more blood meal all around the perimeter of the garden. I also placed metal props around each plant to make it harder to topple them. No more rodent incursions so far, but these anti-squirrel measures don't stop four-line plant bugs from chewing holes in the leaves. Here's the culprit. You have to crush each one you find. Luckily, they mostly eat other plants and their life cycle ends in just a few weeks. Because the clover has grown so tall and lush, every day or two I need to trim it back around the pepper plant so that they get plenty of sun. I just use my hands to rip it out around each plant. I don't trust myself using something sharp that might inadvertently snip off part of a pepper plant. Then I use the cuttings, or rippings as I guess I should call them, to mulch pots. So I'm not quite sure how this companion clover planting experiment is going to work out over the course of the season. I really like the way it looks, but it is creating a lot more work. I'll provide updates as the season progresses. Those of you who have been following this channel over the years know how much I love Portulaca, otherwise known as Moss Rose. I didn't plant any this year, but the seeds are present in the reused potting soil and sprouts are appearing in pots all over the garden. They should be blooming in just a few weeks. And I'd like to be a capsicum companion just for you. Life is short, so why should we be all alone? When there's space and nothing here for two. For your capsicum companion and you. Let's take a final look at the garden before I end this video. If you saw my last episode about Myrtle Spurge, here's how it's looking now as the blossoms spread out and get ready to deploy their seeds. Behind the stone wall are a couple rows of fabric pots. These were the very last to be planted, so they're just getting started. Everything is looking pretty good, but just like last year, there's hardly been any rain. Just one brief shower all month. So I'm doing a lot more watering than I would like. The next water bill is going to be really high, but I'm going to do everything in my power to keep these plants hydrated this summer. I know a lot of you are waiting for a new song. I've got a real banger coming soon, accompanied by a full music video, so look for that in the coming weeks. Later in the season, look for my Walking the Pepper Path video, where I'll give you an up-close and personal look at every variety in the garden. In the meantime, Follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, keep cultivating your passion for plants. For 7 Pot Club, I'm Rob.